हेलो एवरीवन आई एम रचना पाठक फ्रॉम वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी शोलापुर सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी इन दिस सेशन ऑल अबाउट रिलेशंस पोसेट नाउ लेट्स बिगिन विद व्हाट इज पोसेट लर्निंग आउटकम एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन पार्शियल ऑर्डर रिलेशन दैट इज नथिंग बट एब्रीवेटेड एज पोसेट इन रिलेशंस now what are the prerequisite for this first of all you should be aware about the basic discrete mathematical structure basics of relation which you can see in video 1 if you want to refer now beginning with the introduction so what is a poset poset is nothing but partial order relation set which is partially ordered a partial ordered set is nothing but a poset now let us take a simple example for it consider a relation r on a set a which is called as a partial order if it is reflexive antisymmetric and transitive yes here i mean to say you should satisfy all the three condition that is reflexive antisymmetric and transitive now many students get confused with equivalence of relation and poset poset satisfy this three condition reflexive antisymmetric and transitive the set a together with the partial order r is called a partially ordered set or simply a poset which you can denote by a comma r now let a be a collection of a subset of a set s the relation subset of set inclusion is a partial order set or partial order on a so that you can write as a comma subset is a poset so this is how we define all about poset you will get a more clear concept when i use examples to explain so basically we need to remember there are three important properties which is must to satisfy a particular set as a poset and those properties are nothing but reflexive your antisymmetric and transitivity so if you satisfy these three properties then a set is said to be a poset or i can say when a relation satisfies all these three properties then it is said to be poset so this is partial ordering relation let us take a example now consider a set a equals to 1 2 3 now when can i say that a particular relation r1 r2 r3 and many more now i will identify whether this relation r poset or not so let us take with an example now suppose i have a set a where the elements in set a are 1 2 and 3 right now i have to prove that a relation r1 initially i'll take an empty set a relation r2 where i'll take elements 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 element 3 comma 3 so i'll complete this so these are nothing but the relations r1 r2 which is formed by the set a now let us see or let us check whether these relations are poset or not so how to begin now i'll give more clear example let us consider now the set is 1 2 3 it means there are three element in a set a so i can represent this as 1 1 One two, one three. Two one, two two, two three, and one more. It will be three one, three two, and three three. So this is nothing but my matrix, right? Now let's see how you can form or how you can satisfy the conditions. Now suppose if I have reflexive property. now when do you say that a particular relation is reflexive when you have 
all the diagonal elements in a particular relation means if it is 1 1 2 2 3 3 it means your i and j values are same then this is said to be reflexive so when i consider r1 i have nothing to do right because it is an empty set so you cannot do anything for an empty set an empty set is neither reflexive nor transitive nor antisymmetric so here i cannot satisfy any of the condition and this is not a O set. Now let us consider the second example. For second example, we have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So these are nothing but the ordered pairs, right? So in this relation R2, I have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Now let us check 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Yes, this is reflexive. Yeah, this one is reflexive. Now another property is your antisymmetric we have one more property which you have to satisfy to check whether a set is O set or not so we have antisymmetric now how to check whether it is antisymmetric or not so for checking antisymmetric we must satisfy the symmetric antisymmetric is basically opposite of your symmetric now what we have in symmetric is that suppose if you have 2, 1 in a set, then it is mandatory or it is necessary to have 1, 2 in that particular relation. Right? So, this is the criteria how you satisfy the condition for symmetric. Now, exactly inverse we have for the antisymmetric. Now, to check whether it is antisymmetric or not, what we have to do? Just check 2, 1. So, if you are having 2, 1, it means you shouldn't have 1, 2. Right? If you have 2, 1, it means you shouldn't have 1, 2. So, this is your antisymmetric. Now, there is a difference between antisymmetric and asymmetric. The thing is that antisymmetric allows you to have your diagonal values. So, if you have diagonal values, then you can say this is a bit liberal. Then you can say it is an antisymmetric. Now, let's check for this. We have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So, if you have 2, 1, we don't have any of these elements rather than this. So, this is not an antisymmetric. It means you have no condition to check. So, obviously, this will be your antisymmetric. We have no ordered pair where we have to check for the symmetric or antisymmetric. So, we can say it satisfies your antisymmetric property. This is reflexive, it is antisymmetric and now the third condition is your transitive. Now, how to check for transitivity? Transitivity satisfies, suppose if you have element A comma B and you have B comma C, it means you can traverse from A to C, right? So, like this. So, here you can form A comma C. So, if you get this condition or if you satisfy this property, it means it is transitive. Okay, now let's check for our relation. We have 1 comma 1, we have 2 comma 2, we have 3 comma 3. Here I find no element which will be checking for transitivity. It means I don't have to check for transitivity. So, we have reflexive, antisymmetric and transitive. Here I mean I am satisfying the three conditions. See, when you have to check for this condition, when you have that type of element in a relation, if you don't have that element in a relation, automatically we will say it is transitive and antisymmetric. Okay? So, now R2 was your reflexive. Transitive, antisymmetric means this is nothing but your O set. So I can say my R2 is O set. Okay. Let us take one more example. Now think and write. Can we say if any one or two condition satisfies, then it is a partial order? Is this possible if it is antisymmetric and transitive and not reflexive? Can you say still that set or relation is partial order? 
think for a while and then answer? Answer is no. It should satisfy all the three conditions. That is transitive, reflexive and antisymmetric. Now, let us take a simple example. Show that the relation greater than or equal to is a partial ordering on set of integers. Now here the solution is, let z be the set of all integers and you have a relation greater than or equals to. So for the first step or the, for the first condition we will see, integer a is greater than or equals to a for every integer a. Obviously if this is the case, it is reflexive. You can put up two values for a and b where you find two integers and the relation is a is in relation with b and b is in relation with a. It means a is greater than b and obviously b is greater than a and here we say a equals to b. So even if this condition satisfies, it means it is antisymmetric. Now when you satisfy the three condition, obviously it will be posed. So let us check for the transitivity which is your last property that is let a, b and c be any three integer, let a be greater than or equals to b and same for the c. Now obviously I have explained you with the help of example, it means a is also greater than or equals to c and here we satisfy the third important condition that is transitive. Since the relation is transitive, reflexive and antisymmetric, it is said as a posed. Therefore, z comma greater than or equals to is nothing but your posed. So in this session, we have studied all about posed. Now here are some of the references which I have used during the content preparation of this session. Thank you so much.